We're with Jay Olshansky, a professor of public health from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, I hear a lot of people talking about lifespans going to 100, 140, 150. A lot of people say the first, the first person to live to 150 is already born. What do you think of those projections? Well, anything, look, the longest lived human uh, was a woman by the name of Jeanne Calmon, who made it to 122 and a half. She died in 1997. No one's come close since, not even, not even close. Uh, there's no evidence to indicate that the tail of the survival distribution in humans is going to push out uh, significantly. So anyone who's talking about numbers up past, you know, 122, you know, if they're talking about 140, 150, 180, 200, whatever, anything higher than 122 is made up out of thin air. There is no evidence at all to suggest that humans can live that long. And why, where do these numbers come from? I mean, how, how are those projections derived, and then why do they, I guess, get such a currency? I think uh, 120 plus, well, part of that comes right out of the Bible, as you, you may be aware. Um, but uh, other people are, are, are making up numbers, I think, in part because it draws the attention of the press. Uh, and the press, I think, is interested in publishing exaggerated numbers uh, on the covers of the magazines in order to draw people in. But once you get inside the magazines or the, the articles, you quickly realize that, that the actual stories within that are uh, you know, describing the actual science that's going on do not make predictions like that. Okay. And what has been going on in, in longevity in the United States and worldwide in recent decades? Is it increasing or is it stagnated or, or what's the story? Well, life expectancy uh, has gone up up until about 2010. Now, there have been periods of, uh, during which it's declined. Actually, quite frankly, since the beginning of the 20th century, there have been roughly one of every three years life expectancy actually declined. But the overall trajectory has been up. After 2010, there seems to have been a reversal of fortunes uh, and life expectancy has either leveled off or declined. Certainly for some subgroups of the population, it's declined dramatically. Uh, so there's something going on. We're not entirely sure what it is. We think it's associated with the rise of the obesity epidemic. There's no question that uh, causes of death associated with despair uh, have risen. Uh, we, the opioid epidemic, no doubt, is having an influence on this because the numbers are large enough to influence national vital statistics. So something is going on, but it's not just the United States. We're now seeing it in, in parts of Western Europe, uh, Australia, uh, many other parts of the world. We're starting to see the same phenomena. Okay, and we constantly hear about breakthroughs in science, and, uh, and there's great research being done to to cure cancer, different forms of cancers. There's progress being made on to alleviate uh, heart failure. I mean, what happens if we did cure cancers? What happens if, if we did cure heart failure? What would that do to lifespans? Well, life expectancy uh, with a cure for cancer would rise about three and a half years. It would rise about four to four and a half years with a cure for cardiovascular disease. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting we shouldn't be trying to cure these diseases. I certainly want to see them go away. But we have to recognize that in aging bodies, uh, whenever one cause of death goes down, because death is inevitable uh, and disease is inevitable and aging is inevitable, uh, when something goes down, something else must go up. And the question is, what is going to go up when heart disease and cancer go down? And the prediction that many of us have is it'll be neurological conditions. It'll be the components of the body, the Achilles heels of the human body that don't allow us to live exceptionally long lives. So Alzheimer's disease in all likelihood would go through the roof if we experienced a dramatic reduction in cardiovascular disease or cancer, which is the reason, by the way, many of us are now suggesting instead of going after one disease at a time, we should be going after all of them at once by trying to slow aging. Okay. And finally, um, there has been an increase in longevity in the U.S. and worldwide in the last century. What, were the main, what was the main driver of that? Well, the main cause of rising longevity was a reduction in infant and child mortality. I mean, the vast majority of the 30-year gain in life expectancy that occurred since 1900 was a result of death, reductions in death rates before the age of 20. Most of that was accomplished by mid-century. Uh, after mid-century and certainly the last quarter of the 20th century, there were some pretty dramatic reductions in death rates from cardiovascular disease. We've now made some inroads against cancer, certain forms of cancer. So we're getting better and better at, at dealing with and treating many of the complications associated with disease and, and living longer, but there are limits to how, how far we can push this.